What is the true cause of PCOS? Why a celebrity health expert gets it all wrong. Hey friends, I'm a fertility doctor and I talk about PCOS all the time. And one thing that really gets me frustrated is when people spread misinformation on the internet. I think social media and the internet is a great option for people to be able to access information and educate themselves about their body. Obviously, that's why I'm in all the places. However, I really hate when people with big platforms who have no business talking about things, talk about them really loudly and really wrong. I also know that PCOS is very misunderstood and there's a lot of self-blame and stigma. And everybody who has PCOS is looking for a way to cure it. And it is not that simple. Before we dive in here, I have another video talking about PCOS. Feel free to check it out also if you are interested. And please subscribe to the channel if you want more fertility-based health information. Today, let's dive in breaking down the medical medium. First of all, I don't know this guy. He's huge though. I mean, everybody follows him. I go look at his Instagram right now and celebrities are all over it liking this post. I mean, what are these people doing? These are like big time celebrity stars who are all over his stuff. Okay. Medical medium does not claim to be a physician. No, he claims that he's a medium and that spirits talk to him and give him some health facts. So I'm so glad the spirits are bringing some health facts in here. But this post just like sent me over the edge. The true cause of PCOS. That sounds great, okay? Tell me, what is the true cause? Fluid-filled cysts often caused by one or more of over 60 varieties of EBV, Epstein-Barr virus. EBV feeds on a variety of toxins and poisons, then releases destructive chemical compounds that injure healthy ovarian cells and weaken the ovaries and cysts form with the virus inside. Guys, what? I can't even, I could not even make this stuff up. This guy likes EBV a lot. He likes to blame it for a lot of problems. So this is not new news. This is like his comfort zone. So the bottom of the Instagram post, you'll discover how to cleanse your body and take out what you need to heal from PCOS and all your other chronic conditions. I think there are so many people in the comments latching onto this idea because it sounds good because we don't want to acknowledge that sometimes our bodies just have diseases and that it's not a simple cure like drinking celery juice. In fact, let's PubMed some of this and see what we're getting. All right, Z zero, I got zero results. You see, this is PubMed. This is linking to the National Library of Medicine. This is where we have all of our scientific studies. They root through PubMed. And I just put in PCOS and EBV, okay? So I'd like to know where our BFF is getting this information. And the cysts of PCOS are not the problem. They don't cause the disease. So even this idea that EBV gets inside the ovary and fills up these little cysts with toxins, destroying healthy ovarian tissue, therefore now you have PCOS. One, that doesn't address any of the actual problem with PCOS, and two, the cysts are not the problem. So let's just break down a few things because this myth is becoming more prevalent and this Instagram post has over 14,000 likes and he has over millions of followers. So this is an example of a platform that has a verified check on it that looks like a legitimate health source spreading really terrible information. In fact, he has no medical training and no expertise to tell you any of this except that the spirits told him to. So let's go to our friends called Science and talk about EBV. EBV, Epstein-Barr virus, is also known as human herpes virus 4, so EBV, human herpes virus. It's one of the most common viruses. It spreads through body fluid like saliva and it also causes mono. Okay, so do you think it's convenient that I decide I wanna blame any medical problem on a disease that most of the population will be exposed to? That sounds super convenient to me. That doesn't mean that it causes PCOS. Why doesn't the whole world then have PCOS? Because they don't. The whole world doesn't have PCOS. So if EBV or Epstein-Barr virus does not cause PCOS. What does cause PCOS? PCOS is an 
endocrine dysfunction of the ovary. It's an ovarian dysfunction problem. So when you do not ovulate, the different reasons why, it is that there's a dysfunction in communication between your brain and your ovaries. As a fertility doctor, as a medical doctor, as someone with multiple degrees around this, and the true hormone expert, I can tell you with certainty that the spirit guy is wrong on this one. So if you imagine your ovary has a vault inside where all your eggs are kept. When you're born, the vault is full. When you go through menopause, the vault is empty. Every month, a group of eggs is released from the vault. Now, the vault is really full in women with PCOS. It's part of the problem. That's why there's a genetic component to PCOS. It'd be weird to have a genetic component of EBV. It is one of the most common endocrine disorders in reproductive age women, impacting up to 10% of them. And that's a large percentage of all reproductive age women. What we do know is there is a genetic component, and then there is some variability in expression. There's also variability in what we call the phenotype, which means that every person who has PCOS does not have the same clinical picture. PCOS is diagnosed by something called the Rotterdam criteria. Officially, the Rotterdam criteria you must have two out of the three in order to have PCOS. One is irregular periods. So if your periods are not perfectly regular, irregular periods. Number two, signs of high androgens. This one gets trickier as modern medicine has made things better, but acne, extra hair growth, or high testosterone or adrenal androgen levels. And number three, a classic ultrasound appearance of multiple follicles. That is commonly called cysts because a cyst is a fluid-filled follicle. But if you have two out of the three of these diagnoses, you have PCOS. PCOS really has two main phenotypes. One is a more thin presentation or normal weight, and the other is associated with obesity. Common misconception is that women who are overweight, that's the only expression of PCOS. And I think that's because we sometimes see that online, that a common treatment is to lose weight. And that may help for women who are overweight or obese, but it is certainly not how all women with PCOS are. Interesting, regardless of BMI, women who have PCOS are more likely to carry central weight. And that is often because of the insulin resistance and the metabolic disturbances that are associated with it. What happens if you think about having an ovary that has a lot of eggs in the vault, how the ovary corrects itself is it releases a lot of eggs every month. The brain has no idea what the ovary is doing, sends out a normal amount of FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. FSH is the hormone that stimulates an egg to grow. So typically one follicle responds to this FSH, starts growing and ovulates. And that's what happens in a normal menstrual cycle. In PCOS, the brain sends out its normal amount of FSH. It gets distributed amongst all of the follicles and none of them respond. It's like there are too many follicles. They all take a little bit. So nobody gets a strong enough signal to ovulate at a predictable interval. And the ovary is a hormone producing factory and its favorite hormone is estrogen. And it only makes estrogen when you're ovulating. So what happens is that the pathway from the brain to send out its sister hormone, LH, tells the ovaries to make testosterone. And so then you get more testosterone than estrogen. You have high testosterone-like symptoms like acne, hair growth. And then you also get higher rates of insulin resistance, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, these metabolic disturbances that are associated with it. However, the root cause of the symptoms you are seeing is due to an endocrine disorder that has nothing to do with a single cell getting destroyed. On the other end, you have so many eggs that the signal's getting muddied in the water. When somebody has obesity, it gets even murkier because estrogen is normally the feedback to the brain to tell it to send out less or more FSH. So when the body's making an egg, you have more estrogen, less FSH comes from the brain. And when the body's not making an egg, you have lower estrogen, so more FSH for the brain. If you think about a woman who's overweight, each fat cell makes some estrogen too. So it clouds the signal from the brain. So the brain also can't respond as high or low because the baseline has now been raised from this baseline higher estrogen level. And so that's why women who are overweight may be told to lose weight, their baseline estrogen level drops, and then their brain sensitivity increases a little bit. I actually think that lifestyle and environment matter a lot when it comes to PCOS. I talk to my patients, regardless of their phenotype, about being on a scale. And there will be times of your life or of your health where you may have your PCOS more controlled and other times where it is less controlled. We are getting more research that certain stressful states of the body actually can make PCOS worse. And things like eating certain foods like dairy may be inflammatory and make your PCOS worse. 
or high intensity exercise may actually increase your cortisol levels and make your PCOS worse or high stress environment may make your PCOS worse, so a stressful period of time. I tell everybody you cannot cure your PCOS. And so we do know that there is a, some genetic component. There's also something called epigenetics, which means the genes get turned on and off when a woman is pregnant for her child. So what you do during pregnancy and things that you're exposed to in toxins and environment may play a big role. And this research on epigenetics is growing and growing and goes with a common idea that you inherit a genetic predisposition and then something triggers you off. But that something's not EBV. And there hasn't been any association with viruses in any form of the fashion. And this mechanism that it's destroying cells is just crazy. So you can't help it if you get PCOS. It's not a virus that you got from kissing somebody or drinking after their straw that caused their PCOS. Similarly, you can't cleanse PCOS out of your body. You may eat as healthy as possible and try to control all these lifestyle variables and it may make zero impact on your disease. And that is not a failure. It might feel like a failure based on what our friend is telling you, that you should buy his books and do his cleanse to get rid of your PCOS, your chronic condition, but it can be cured. It is an ovarian endocrine dysfunction that you can try to control at some points Let's just think about having diabetes. You may be able to control your diabetes by eating better and doing other things, and you may make your diabetes worse by eating candy canes all the time. However, you're not gonna just cure it. You'll either have it controlled or uncontrolled. PCOS is similar, and sometimes no matter how perfect your lifestyle is, you can't control it. Your body will not ovulate, it's an endocrine disorder, and the communication between the brain and the ovary, they are not best friends anymore. And so to act like celery juice is going to come and cure that is a huge problem and a huge disservice to women. PCOS is so stigmatized. Women hate to admit that they have it. They feel shameful when they get the diagnosis. There is a thought that toxins and environmental things do play a role in PCOS. But when we talk about toxins, I don't mean EBV making toxins in your ovaries. I mean known environmental toxins, BPA, phthalates, PFCs, endocrine disrupting chemicals, and advanced glycolation end products. These things are found in plastics, Teflon, anti-consumer goods like makeups and self-care products, and a huge source of AGEs is actually in animal-based products. So yes, diet and environment do matter in a lot of chronic diseases and in PCOS, but that's not EBV. Data supports that these environmental toxins are more associated with PCOS. That doesn't mean it causes it, but they're higher associated. So no matter how you wanna say that, it is prudent that you try to limit your exposure to them if you have PCOS or if you are pregnant. This is not new news. It's just not well talked about. I'm going to read one sentence from an article that I like that says this. Since wide exposure to environmental toxins and their role in the pathophysiology of PCOS are supported by extensive data derived from diverse scientific models, protective strategies and strong recommendations should be considered to reduce human exposure to protect present and future generations from their adverse health effects. Now, that's a whole other topic on why we're not talking about environmental toxins and better regulations. We need to protect the environment and our bodies and our kids from things that are being contaminated. Please, please think about who is giving you medical information. Is this a valid source? What is their training? Why are they an expert? Are they just calling themselves an expert? So please look at who is giving you information so you can make good and informed decisions for yourself. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. As always, you can get more information on the As A Woman podcast, or you can follow me on Instagram at Natalie Crawford, MD. Thanks, friends.